Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. Today on the bench I have some Calb CA180 cells. There are four of them in here. I'm going to save you the struggle of watching another unboxing video. Here they are and one thing that I want to mention is there's a lot of these going around that are not genuine and I'm going to talk about a few ways to tell whether they're genuine or not and I'm also going to show you in this video bottom balancing these and get them ready for my next video where I'm going to capacity test them. So here they are, the genuine Calb cells, and like I said a moment ago, these are 180 amp hour cells, and you'll note that the sticker is completely intact. They say they are model CA180F, nominal voltage 3.2 volts, 180 amp hours, 576 watt hours, company China Aviation Lithium Battery, which is what Calb stands for. Everything on this side of the battery is immaculate, Everything on the other side is identical, the same sticker, completely immaculate. And then I have on the negative side of the battery a serial number, and this last four of the serial number is 001. My other cells are 002, 003, and 004. I very specifically requested from the company in China that sent me these to label them 1 through 4. So they're labeled 1-1 through 1-4 and they have a QR code on the top and that is completely intact. Now they do have a seal over the negative terminal but they didn't have one on the positive terminal and I asked them about this and got a interesting response. They were you know not totally crystal clear on them but I told them for future batteries that I buy that is totally unacceptable. I want genuine cells that are not you know cheated and and sent out last minute I want the the full complete thing uh, because there's a lot of companies in China that are willing to rip you off in order to make a quick buck and I made very clear with them I'm planning on buying more batteries and I don't want these to just be a quick buck for them with these batteries I've got these plastic caps and these go over top of the cells and then I also have the genuine bus bars and they are here. Now I'll get you a close-up shot on these but these bus bars are actually a stack of it looks like five individual thin bus bars and a lot of the knockoff companies in China will cut this heat shrink off and unlaminate these and send you one of these single laminations as a actual bus bar and that's actually in my first buy of Calb CA100 cells how I got ripped off because they only sent me a single thickness of this and it wasn't the genuine thing. So in time going through these different purchases I've learned what to look for and what to avoid and it appears in this case I got genuine cells. So this is really quite interesting. The bus bars that they sent I had a package of two and a package of four and what I actually realized is what was the package of two? They're a different length. I don't know if you guys can really tell but these cells are spread farther apart on these two bus bars as compared to these ones where the cells are right up close to each other and what those are for is when you have these batteries side by side as you can imagine you may need to snake around and not make connections all in line this way if you were to have the batteries in this configuration the length between the terminals is different and that's why you would need those other kinds of bus bars because now this connection is the perfect length and the batteries can be right up next to each other so here is the test report that I got with the batteries. It's a nice group of paperwork. There is quite a bit of paperwork documentation in with this. Um, this is all in Chinese, so it's hard to tell what exactly it is, but it appears to be showing uh, cell 1234 and the capacity, and they're specking 198.6 amp hours. I'm assuming this is amp hours. Um, for number one, cell number two, 198.5, cell number three, 198.7, and cell number four, 198.7. And what's great about these, these cells is they advertise them as 180 amp hours, and the reality is they're far more, but the purpose is after they've been used for a while and some of the capacity is lost in their multiple thousand cycle lifespan, uh, they're still going to perform to spec and then it appears I have the cardstock manual that came with these now This is all in Chinese, so I really can't uh, Do much with it, but it's there nonetheless. I wonder if there's English in the back No, it appears the whole thing is completely in Chinese and Then I have some more paperwork. It looks like the testing report 
um, more testing report specifications, but it's all in Chinese, and it has the matching serial numbers uh, to the batteries that I have and a full testing report documentation. So this is definitely the nice part about genuine Cal batteries is they have everything thoroughly documented on each cell. They say the internal resistance, capacity of batteries, all the requirements in here it shows in English actually, actually partially English, it shows the requirements for the testing and what the conditions are to pass. So they're definitely thorough on their testing and documentation and I have all the documentation for all of these batteries and what I was telling my seller was that it is very critical for me to get all of this documentation because I need to be able to trust them because my plan is to buy a lot of cells from them in the future so this was my sample kit this was about a thousand dollars for these four cells by the time taxes and importing and customs and all the duties and air shipping it took quite a bit but these four batteries are my samples because I wanted to make sure what I'm getting is what they're advertising prior to me spending more money on more cells. Okay, I've got my Fluke 116 multimeter and these batteries and I'm in order from cell 1, 2, 3 and finally cell 4 here at the front. I'm finally ready for the moment of truth where I can pull off the ceiling tab which is intact, doesn't look like it's been tampered with before. I'm gonna pull those off on all four batteries and inspect them and they all appear to be intact. There's no dirt on the inside of the ring, so that's good. Uh, just looking for any signs that these may have ever been tampered with um, because like I said, I'm really putting a lot of pressure on the seller that these are genuine and not something that they uh, are cheating me on. And it looks so far to be good. The copper on the top of these cells is in phenomenal condition. There is no oxidation. So now I can take a voltage reading. So starting with cell 1, I have 3.283 volts. Cell 2, 3.281 volts. Cell 3, 3.277 volts. And cell 4, finally, 3.281 volts. So now I'm going to use these bus bars and connect them all in parallel and let them equalize out because there was one cell that was a little bit different. So for this I have a special screwdriver. This is a nut driver with a half inch hex on it and I've applied a very nice piece of heat shrink to the front of this because I don't want this in any way to short anything out. So I'm making sure I'm not using a conductive tool. Now they do sell tools that are already set up for live usage because you cannot turn a battery off and there are very dangerous currents here that could cause a big spark or arc flash and we want to definitely be safe. I'm going to grab my bus bars from over here and orient these. I'm going to connect the outer sets first because then when I put my middle bus bar it's on the same level. It's not at different levels. So I can get everything nice and solidly connected so that I can get these bottom balanced. Now I have all of these cells properly tightened down. I, I shouldn't say properly because I only use my screwdriver and felt by hand. Uh, the lock washers are all completely compressed, so that's good. But ideally, you should use a torque wrench because these do have copper threads. Now, something very interesting that I noticed is the positive cells have a helicoil looking insert. And I don't believe this is because the threads were stripped, but they are in an aluminum material. And I think they're putting that helicoil type deal in there because they don't want to have the aluminum taking the full torque or uh, I guess you could say clamping force to holding these bus bars so they have a stronger material in there that can't easily be pulled out. So now if I take a measurement from the positive to the negative of all these batteries I have 3.28 volts precisely and these are going to have to sit together for a bit so that they can all get together and like I mentioned earlier I'm going to get my dummy load connected onto this so that I can drain them down to 3 volts. I've gone ahead and brought these down to 3 volts now and to do this I used my heating element here in the background and I made a modification to my cable that has the shunt on it. I added an 80 amp circuit breaker on the positive leads so now I can easily flip this on and off to start the tests. I did need to change out my 48 volt element in this test load for a 12 volt element and running the 3 volts through that 600 watt element was pulling about 15 amps off these batteries 
batteries. So I've got these down to right around three volts. I'm gonna check it with my multimeter set to volts DC. And if I probe, let me get the right probe in the right place. 2.997 volts and that is within a reasonable amount of accuracy for a bottom balance. The manual I was actually using a translator that scans over the manual and reads it, it translates it back into English and they're actually recommending three volts as a uh, balancing voltage for these. So that's pretty cool to know that what I've been doing all along at three volts is in line with what Cal recommends for their batteries. So what I can do now is take all the bus bars apart and reconfigure this for 12 volts. And I have a inverter charger. It can put out 120 amps to charge these back up, but I can always taper down the charge current and make that less. With all the bus bars removed, I can then switch around two of these cells so that I have a negative positive, negative positive configuration. And I'm gonna switch the second cell along with the fourth cell. And now I can use my shorter bus bars. I actually have some longer ones. If you look at this close up, you can really see there is a length difference. And this is again, like I was showing earlier for different configurations if you have the cells side by side. So on my charger, I have a short negative lead. I wanna connect that onto this cell. So what I'm gonna do is connect this positive of the first cell to the negative of the second cell, and then the positive of the second cell to the negative of the third cell. And I'm gonna do that with three bus bars continuing throughout the pack. And then I can put in the screws here. And these are my main pack terminals that I can get power in and out of this entire battery from. And that's where I'll go ahead and connect my charger. Now, ideally, you would want to secure these batteries together. Some of the other fellow YouTubers uh, just use electrical tape, and I don't think that's the best. Some use hose clamps, but if you're just in an off-grid application that's stationary, you can actually just have these sitting on a nice flat surface, such as the floor, and that should be plenty good enough to keep them you know, all at the same plane, so that way you don't have to worry about stressing these terminals at all. So now with all these bus bars tightened down, I can actually install the caps to be safe about things. And these fit extremely nicely. This is actually the first time I've seen the genuine uh, Cal battery caps because I've never actually gotten brand new cells. I've always been getting secondhand ripoff cells from China. But this is actually extremely nice because it covers all of the exposed metal. There's a little tiny sliver near some of the bus bars that is still exposed, but it gets the greater majority of it and it's really gonna be safe. It's, it's gonna prevent the accidental drop of maybe a screwdriver or something like that on these and keep things from blowing up. But now with all these caps installed, I can bring over my battery charger and connect negative and positive here and just use those same bolts that were provided. To be 100% sure I got all the connections right, I'm gonna use my voltmeter real quick and measure across the terminals, and I see 11.99 volts. And that makes total sense if I have three volts per cell times four cells, three times four is 12. So that tells me I got all the connections right, and now I can go ahead and connect on my battery charger. So I have the negative of this inverter already connected. I'm now ready to connect the positive, and I used an external power supply to charge up the capacitors in this inverter so that this doesn't make a spark. So when I connect the positive, there is no huge spark. I've talked about in previous videos the dangers of connecting inverters to batteries like this that have such a low internal resistance because these batteries truly are ready to whack out a ton of power and that can cause damage to the inverter simply because the capacitors will receive as much power as is thrown at them and that can possibly be more power than the leads of the capacitors are rated for. And it can also blow apart the PCB traces and stuff like that. So it's really not good to just go throw a battery on an inverter, especially with these lithium iron phosphate chemistries. So I've got this all connected now and I can turn on the inverter and start charging, but I'm gonna get my voltmeter clamped on first because this charger is not gonna be set up quite right. And I need to find a set point on this inverter that never lets these batteries cross 3.8 volts. That is 3.8 volts is the one cell max that is in the CALB manual that they recommend but typically 3.65 is a resting full charge voltage and it really doesn't help to push these cells all the way to their max of 3.8 volts because there's so little power stored in that, that end few couple of millivolts 
that it's not worth the wear and tear on these cells. They really like going typically in the 10% to 90% range. That's where the majority of their power is. And by stressing them with the last 10% and the first 10%, you're really not getting much more out of them other than putting a lot more wear and tear on them. So I'm going to get these charged and we'll come back in a minute. So yeah guys, looking at these cells, it's looking like cell 4 is going to be the first one to reach that 3.8 volt reading. So I'm going to continue letting these charge until that one cell hits its max voltage of 3.8 volts. And at that point, I'm going to stop charging and we'll be ready for our capacity test. So I'm going to stop it here for the video. I'm going to keep going until this is at 3.8 volts. But if you're interested in the capacity test on this battery, I'll be releasing that video next Saturday. If you're not watching this right as it comes out, be sure to click the card in the top right corner to watch that capacity test. But as other than that, if you learned something from today's video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you're interested in purchasing batteries just like these, I'm looking at doing a large purchase of these batteries. And if you want to get in on a discounted price, I can really help you guys with that. So either leave a comment below and we'll get in contact via email or a private message. Um, but yeah, these cells are phenomenal. It took a long time to charge because they really can store a lot of power. And now I'm going to do the capacity test, which will take quite a while as well, because like I just said, they store a lot of power. So anyway, guys, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and see you later. Bye now.